welcome to an SVJ tutorial. My name is Astrid and today we're going to make a really cool fingerprint animation. So let's get to it. All right. So the first thing I want to show you is my file setup. I think this is going to be the first step here to understand how we're going to make this animation. So I basically have a grid as the bottom layer because since I have the frame, like these four parts, they're going to be moving independently. So I want to make sure that they're always aligned no matter where they go. And then I have a group where I have both my frame and my fingerprint. So the way the fingerprint works is pretty much the same thing uh, repeated twice. So I have one for the initial state, which is the opaque green that we're seeing here. And then I have the bright green and then I have the pink. And we're basically going to have three main stages uh, for this animation to, to happen. So we're going to have like this default state, which, you know, if we get creative, this would be like the fingerprint scanner is not active at the moment. So it's like kind of like waiting for your fingerprint. And then as we start uh, scanning the fingerprint, it gets a little bigger and then it gets active and the lines animate one by one. And then we momentarily go back to that initial state where we could say it's kind of like thinking if it's going to approve the fingerprint or not. And then the pink state over here is kind of like, yes, accepted the, the fingerprint or like, you know, successfully scanned the, the fingerprint. And then finally, we're going to go back to the first state here where, you know, it's basically the same initial state, but since we wanted to loop seamlessly, we just wanted to go back to the, to the first state, to the initial state. So let's figure out how to do that here in SVJator. First thing I want to make sure is that my grid is locked the way I have it here, because I want it kind of like there, but out of the way. I don't want to accidentally move. And then let's start with the frame animation. So I have my four layers here. And they need to move independently. So we have to animate each each uh, each one separately. So I'm going to select the first one here. I'm going to go to animate and then animate position. And then one very important thing I have to make sure is that the center of origin here for my uh, shape, in this case, the, the left top uh, part of the frame is right in the middle. So here's the middle of my illustration. And we're going to do exactly the same with the other one. So making sure that that's right in the middle, bottom left, I'm just going to move it. And, you know, if you're not seeing it, make sure that you are in the transform tool. And that's that way you're going to be able to see your, your little uh, center of origin for the animation. So let's just put it right there in the middle. And then... Now we're going to animate each one. So we animate the position as I was already doing. I'm going to go forward probably like half a second and then add a, a, a keyframe there. And then I'm, with shift and my arrow keys, I'm going to do two, two times to, towards the top and then two times left. And then I'm going to do exactly the same uh, with the other uh, three, but you know, in this case, to the right. Uh, so let's do position. Let's make sure I'm, I'm at zero. Position, go forward uh, 0.5 seconds. Arrow up twice. Arrow up right twice. And then I'm going to do the same for the third one. Position, half a second at the keyframe. And then arrow left twice. Arrow down twice. And, you know, I'm sure you get it now. So I'm just going to repeat this, the last step with the last corner I have here. Position, go forward one second, add keyframe, shift right twice, shift down twice. Remember to hold shift for this to, to work. Now, if I play this, it looks linear and very boring. That's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to select all, all of this and I'm going to go here. And I'm going to add something like an ease in or maybe like an ease out. And then I'm going to make it sharp. So it starts very quickly. And when it gets to the end, it kind of like slows down a little bit. And 
that already makes it a lot more interesting. Now, the other thing that I want at this initial step is for my fingerprint to get a little bit bigger because, you know, we're like simulating that the fingerprint, the scanner is getting, is getting activated. So I think to accomplish that effect, we can just grab the whole group and make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna animate the scale right here and it's gonna happen at the same time and we're, we're gonna match the same half a second there. So I'm gonna another, add another keyframe here and then it's gonna go from 52. You can find that here under the transform uh, transforms tab, by the way. So we're gonna go from 52 to maybe around 58. I think that's good. And then make sure too that the proportions here are kept uh, even. You don't want it to like be like this and then you know, you're gonna lose your proportions. Definitely be careful with that. And let's see it now. So again, I also need to do a little bit of uh, ease for, for this uh, animation, this scaling animation. So I'm gonna do exactly the same I did for my frame. So something like that. And yeah, so that gives the illusion that the the fingerprint scanner is kind of like getting activated with our fingerprint. Now, the next thing that needs to happen here is our lines, uh, like our fingerprint lines, need to start animating one by one. I'm going to lock my opaque layer. We don't need to do anything with that one because that one's just the background for the for the bright green one to animate. So... If I turn this one on, we see all the lines here and that's not exactly what we want. So we're gonna animate each one and I'm gonna start selecting each one from the center out. I think that's what makes the most sense in this case, but if you wanna do something different, you can also do that. At 0.5 seconds, I want this to start animating the lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do stroke offset animation. So this is, basically going to go from not showing at all to kind of like drawing itself and, and showing 100%. So we're gonna go under appearance and we're gonna find this property called dashes. We're gonna copy that number, 37.31 in this case, we're gonna copy it into the offset property. So that's gonna make it disappear and that's exactly what we need for this. Let's say 0.9 seconds. And then I can put that offset back to zero here. So that means that the effect of like the line getting drawn and like, or the fingerprint line getting scanned uh, is, uh, that's how we do that part. So that's pretty good. And, you know, for the next line now, this one's a lot longer. So it's going to require more time to animate if we want it to look like it's going at the same speed. So I'm going to follow the same process and maybe I want them to be a little staggered. So I don't want it to start exactly at the same time. So I'm just gonna move it up uh, 0.1 second and then I'm gonna make it a lot longer. Maybe we'll go all the way to one and a half seconds. And then I'm gonna repeat the process here. So I'm gonna bring my dashes number or value to the offset property. Copy and paste, and then I already added the keyframe here, so it's all, it's already working. So, you know, it's a longer line, so it would definitely take longer to get scanned. But at the same time, we want it to look like both of those lines are kind of like going at the same speed, if that makes sense. So I think that's pretty good there. I might even make it a little longer, something like that. And I'm going to repeat the process with every single line here. So I'm going to show you one more and then we can just skip through this process so you don't have to watch me animate each line one by one for the next 10 minutes. So again, let's grab this third line right here. We're going to go to animate. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to go maybe here, 0.7 seconds, animate, stroke offset, and then this one, I would say it's probably a little shorter than the previous one. So maybe we'll go all the way here, add that keyframe, and then go back here, copy the dashes value, and then paste it into the offset property. So let's see all three. 
in action or let, let's see the whole thing in action now let's see what what it's looking like and yeah i think that's pretty cool so all right now with the magic of editing i have skipped forward in time and all of my lines are animated so this is what it's looking like now after this happens I wanted to make it look like it's thinking for a second. So the way that's going to happen is if you see here, it's actually going to go back to its initial state for just like maybe like half a second. Let's actually find where when this animation ends. So around this point right here, 0.9 seconds. I'm going to find my, my green group and I'm going to make it go away for the duration of my little mini animation there. So. I'm going to animate the opacity. So it's going to go from 100% to zero over here. But I don't want it to happen like slowly like that, right? That's not what we want. So instead of doing that, I'm actually going to hold the opacity at 100%. And then actually when it ends, that's when I want that opacity to start going down to zero. So let's see. Something like that. Uh, but instead of something linear, I want to make sure that I have something, again, more exciting than just a linear easing. So something like this. Let's see what it looks like. And yeah. So it momentarily goes off. And I want to also do the same for the four parts of my frame here. I want them to uh, get smaller again. And then the whole thing is also going to go back to its original point 52 that we had before. So we're going to copy this one, which, which is the scale at, uh, at point 58. And then we're going to copy this one, which is the initial size, which is 52. So it would be something like this. So when that happens, I also want my my frames to go back to their original position like i was saying so i'm gonna animate them back to their original position here so i'm gonna copy the first keyframe i'm gonna put it right here and then i'm also gonna make sure i have this one to hold that position until the, the that part of the animation gets triggered so i'm just gonna repeat that step for all the for all the corners of my frame this is a Last one here, and we can do the same for this one and the same for this one. Let's see what that looks like. So, you know, like as it gets scanned, kind of like go off for a second to, to think before our next animation gets triggered. So the next step we have here is for the pink layer to pretty much come from the top down. So this is not going to be the same type of animation that we used for the for the green highlights. This one's actually going to be a layer or like a mask that goes from the top down to reveal the the pink. I have my fingerprint over here. And I don't want it to be visible uh just like that. I want it to be revealed with uh with the help of a mask. So to do that, I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm, I'm just gonna I just want to make sure that it covers the area of my pink fingerprint so it doesn't have to be too big just put it in there and then I'm gonna select the rectangle and the pink layer with my fingerprint and I'm gonna go here uh, right mouse click and then click on create mask so that's gonna create a mask to cover that and then we're simply going to animate that mask to come from the top down. So I'm going to open this group that it created. I'm going to uh, select my rectangle. And then I'm going to go to, before I do that, I'm going to move my rectangle up and out of the, of the fingerprint here. And then I'm going to uh, animate the position. I'm going to go forward, maybe like... 0.4 seconds and then I'm going to bring that same rectangle down and that way our our pink fingerprint will get revealed so that let's see what that looks like now I think that's perfect now I also want my 
my frame, my four pieces of my frame to turn pink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that that pink color in one of my, my pads here. So I'm gonna copy my hex code. And then I'm going to animate the four parts of the frame to change colors. So everything's also going to happen at the same time that the 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 pink fingerprint gets revealed. So I'm gonna start here, add a stroke color animation to my top left uh, part of the frame, and then I'm gonna go forward to where that other animation ends with the pink here, and then I'm going to change that to it's gonna go from a uh, gradient to a solid color and then I'm going to paste my hex code into here and then I just simply repeat repeat exactly the same step for the for the other three so all right and now that I have all all four corners of the stroke color animation we can see what that's looking like let's go back to the beginning let's check it out and that's perfect I think that gives it a uh, kind of like an effect that maybe our fingerprint successfully scanned and now I'm also going to make sure that my timing for the group scaling also matches my my green opacity here so I'm just going to bring right here these keyframes and let's see what that looks like so once it scans and it approves uh, if we could say that I also, you know, it's going to go back to its original state of being like disabled. So I want to make sure that as it gets smaller, that pink goes away and we go back to the original state. So in this case, we are going to go over here when it stops, uh, when it starts getting smaller, that pink needs to go away. So we're going to add an opacity animation to our rectangle mask. So we're going to go to opacity and we're going to bring that from 100% to zero over here. So let's bring that back to zero. So that way we're going to see again our opaque fingerprint. And then we're going to bring back our gradient from the stroke color. So I'm just going to copy this keyframe here for each one. So I can copy this and well, this one's going to hold right there. And then this one's going to change back to its original color. And then I'm going to go ahead and do exactly the same for the other three. So let's see the whole thing again. It's smaller, changes color, goes back to its original size. All right. Now that I'm happy with my uh, transitions here, let's look at our final creation. I'm going to turn off the grid just to see the fingerprint fingerprint in action a little bit better here. And, you know, I would probably spend a little more time tweaking the timing and the, the easing. So, and if you were following along, feel free to tweak things to your heart's content. But I'm going to leave it till here. And yeah, that's how you make a fingerprint animation. I hope it all made sense and I, I encourage you to follow along this video. And if you do and you have any questions or any issues with this, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.